So, what, what, did, what, what did I say in the beginning? When we were talking about guarding our hearts, I'm saying if you assume that everybody thinks the way you do and they have the same intentions that you do or they even conduct themselves in the way that you do, yeah. you're going to get hurt. Yes. And so I got hurt. I'm on a journey to discover, uncover, and recover love. Life is about helping others. Dear future wifey has been doing exactly that. You stated that women are to present and not to pursue. It has given us a, a roadmap on how relationships were meant to be by God. There are still black men who love the Lord and their end goal is marriage. Thank you for teaching me how to stay lit, how to be intentional and transparent. You read your, your letter. I cried. I just got married two months ago, and I'm listening to the podcast so I can stay married. I'm Lateris R. Whitfield, and this is season four, These Dating Streets, on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. I'm your host, Lateris R. Whitfield. Hey, listen, we are approaching our two-year anniversary. We're still on the go to hit 100,000 subscribers. So, hey, are you still shacking up with us? Come on, y'all. If you're still shacking up with us, Let's make a commitment and hit that subscription button. Also, turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. Uh, gosh, these dating streets have gotten really, really interesting. And you guys have been DMing, you have been commenting, and I see that you're finding extreme value in the content. And so we greatly appreciate that. A lot of you have been asking about Kingdom Royale and the update on it. Well, take a look at this update video. We now have access to the land for Kingdom Royale. So here's an update. 12 days after camping out on the land, a podcast guest felt led to help us out by purchasing the land to take it off the market. Now this gives us more time to raise the $1.4 million to purchase the land while also allowing us 100% access to meet with architects, developers, and just walk the land and allow the Lord to cast vision. So far, we've raised a little over $50,000. Thank you to all of you who've donated and crowned the king. Your heart for giving is greatly appreciated. We filed for our 501c3 designation back in January, so the ball is moving. I've been doing a ton of research, meeting with other organizations who are doing the work in the foster care arena. Thank you to the residential group care facilities who've invited me to visit their businesses and are just being open-handed with a wealth of information. I'm eternally grateful for y'all. Shout out to Kathleen Lavelle, president and CEO of Dallas Casa. Man, she's amazing, y'all. She's been teaching me fundraising strategies. I'm really looking forward to the work we'll do together, Kathleen. God is so strategic, y'all. I'm so inspired. Hey, I just wanted to give you a quick update and let you know what's been going on. Thank you for believing in Kingdom Royale. <laughs> My heart is eternally grateful for all of you who just planting seeds in our next generation. Make a donation today and crown a king. Thank you to each and every one of you who have donated. Uh, we're still tackling this goal, so make sure that you spread the word. Um, I'm gonna go out and visit a lot of these other organizations that are doing similar work. Uh, those of you that are in the work in the field of foster care and adoption, uh, continue to email me, share those gems of wisdom, and uh, I'll let you know in advance that I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Well, today's guest, Man, I've been wanting to have my girl on this podcast for a couple of seasons now. And, uh, you know, I'm not even going to go deep into why. You're going to find out why I find so much value in this woman of God. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. My homie, Denai Marari. How you doing, sister? I'm wonderful. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah. You on the podcast now. <laughs> I am. I can't believe I'm finally here. See, normally we're always doing lives or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And the people, our last live that we did on your IG, you got such overwhelming uh, response of people saying, y'all, you know, y'all need to do this again. They said that that was the most valuable uh, live that we've done. So uh, thank you. Thank you for finding value in my content. Tonight. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Like, I'm, I'm constantly watching and enjoying what it is that you're doing. I love your whole mission over here. Um, I like your interview style. And I really love a lot of the insights that you provide. So... And see, you're a whole therapist out here in these streets. So, uh, <laughs> so that, that speaks volumes. So, deny. Yes, sir. I asked you... Um, 
what subject matter that you felt was most applicable to you in these in this series we're doing called Guarded. Mm -hmm. And um, you said, guard your heart. Mm -hmm. So today's episode is titled, Guard Your Heart. Why do you think it's important for us to guard our heart? Well, scripture says, because out of it, you know, guard your heart because out of it flow the issues of life. And I think, whoo, I'm not going to start crying this early. Like that's, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Um, I think what happens is when we um, get out here in these dating streets and we do so without a real understanding of the people that we're walking amongst and the types of dangers that are out there. And I don't want to, you know, at the same time have people just walking in a spirit of fear. Right. But if you are unaware of the intentions of other people and you are unaware of what is actually out here and the fact that there are predators and there are yes. toxic people and there are people who just have agendas that are completely different than yours, um, then you can get hurt and you can get hurt really badly. And unfortunately, um, the result of a lot of that hurt is what I see on a regular basis, which is people taking that into their relationships later on when they get with someone who's great and it has, you know, overwhelming effects. And so, you know, I think guarding your heart is something that more people need to learn, like from their parents and more people need to learn and think about when they're out here in these streets and things. Um, and I think that it's just, I think it's a really powerful tool, but I also I want to balance that out by saying what I don't want is for people to be so guarded that they are never vulnerable, never transparent, mm -hmm. never open, Facts. and they never actually decide to like dive in and take a chance on someone. I think it's just about, um, what would, what would I say? Uh, it's about the words are, they're, they're escaping me right now, but basically but, doing but, something but, informed. But how do you, how do you do that? Like, how do you find balance? Like you said, you wish that our parents taught us that. Well, it's hard for a parent to teach you something that they didn't know themselves. That's true. And so that's where your line of practice comes into play. That's of true. Therapy. So what are, what are some tools you teach people in order to guard their heart? Um, so I, for me, guarding your heart has a lot to do with trust. Right. And so with trust, what I see a lot of times is um, a big mistake that people make is you like someone and based on the fact that you like that person, you dive all in. Yes. You run all the way down the dock and dive into the deep end <laughs> and you're in. Right. And meanwhile, that person could still be standing on like the sand. Like, what is this person doing? You know what I mean? Like, what are you, what are you doing right now? Um, and so and that's a really easy way to get hurt is you just you see something you like and you go for it yeah and so let me be careful and kind of meticulous when i say this there's nothing wrong with seeing what you like and going for it but you need to do it in a measured manner Talk that's about what i'm trying it. to say Talk you know about it, so informed consent what do i mean i mean baby steps you give you take a step you watch what they do with that yes. if they do great with it you take another step Talk about you watch it. what they do with that if they do great with it you take another step and so you kind of baby step yourself down you know the dock until you can finally and make an informed decision because of all of these baby steps that you have in your yes. history and now you can dive in and you know there's never going to be anything that's 100% safe but at least then you've done your homework you it, you're looking at the risk there it is it's yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Calculated. I was yeah. trying to find the words. Um, calculated risk. Yes, you've done your homework. You've done your due diligence. You're looking for red flags. You're not seeing them. You're trusting them with a little bit of vulnerability. Yes. And they don't throw it back at you or they don't laugh at you and they hold space for you and they encourage you instead of, you know, discouraging you or minimizing you or dismissing you. Um, these are good signs, healthy signs that there might be something cool here. Yes. So you just little by little from faith to faith and glory to glory. Talk Make it. your way down there. And that way, like I said, by the time you dive in, um, it's a calculated risk. It's an informed risk yes. instead of just going blindly. Oh, I love it. I love it. You know, a lot of times when we arrive at these epiphanies in our lives is, is due to certain heartbreak or trial and errors that we had in our personal life. Do you feel like you uh, had some times in your life where you weren't so wise in these decisions? Darn skippy. <laughs> Don't we all? Don't we all just have disasters everywhere? Um, and you know, I, I used to hear people say that they learned from 
their mistakes and their disasters. And I didn't like that. I didn't like that. Maybe that's the Virgo in me. I don't know. You know, the perfectionist or something. But I, did, I didn't like that. But the further I've gone on down my road, I understand now yeah. what people mean. Um, for me, when I have been hurt, when I've been cut to the bone, I learn more from those experiences than anything else, largely because it hurts so bad, I never want to go back there again. So I'm going, okay, God, what was I supposed to learn? Because I don't want to repeat this. Um, and turns out you get a whole bunch of treasures in that. So mm. yes, I have. I've learned from so many different things. I, you know, we're talking about guarding your heart today. And for me, I kind of see that as like standing in the hedge of the Lord that yeah. was around Job. Um, and so for me, um, I have like the way that I've navigated with a lot of my relationships has been in the kingdom. Um, not always, but mostly in yeah. the kingdom. And so I remember, um, a time in my life where I had a roommate and she was part of that hedge. I have a bunch of prayer partners Good. and friends who are, you know, in a Bible study with me and stuff. And, um, we, whenever we're struggling, you know, we walk each other through, yeah. um, we, we're, we hold each other accountable. You say struggling, what you mean? People may not understand what uh, you mean. Struggling with anything, but in this case it was lust. Yeah. You know okay. what I mean? And so, um, I'm like anybody else. Like I'm not a prude. I am not, um, I'm very conservative, which is weird, but I'm right. not a prude. So it's weird. Like you're I, conservative, I, but you got some undercover freak in you. Is that what you're trying uh, to say? That might, maybe that, that <laughs> I, I suppose that could be, That's that might is. be accurate. Um, and by that, I mean, it, cause I'm, I'm an anomaly in so many different ways. Like, um, because I have a, a strong foundation of Bible. Yeah. Um, I believe there's a, time and a place for everything yes and so it's not that i'm a prude and it's not that i you know i don't believe in sex or anything like that no quite the contrary it's a beautiful <laughs> quite thing con yeah. quite the it's, i said quite the contrary yes <laughs> it's a beautiful thing it's a lovely thing god made it when you do it under the right you know circumstances yeah. the angels rejoice there are all these wonderful <laughs> things about it so you know it's awesome like that i just think we're oversexed a lot in this generation um and online especially and in certain ways it makes me sad because i feel like instead of people getting to know who you are as a fully functioning holistic human being it, there's that one thing and it's as if that's the most valuable thing about you and it's not there's so many other things that's yes. number one but then number two is the moment that sex enters into a relationship that is not ordained, um, and this is just my belief. I know people will be like, what does that mean? Um, you know what I mean? Because I there's always I someone going, what, is, what exactly does that mean? The moment that sex is, is entered into a relationship that is not, that there is no covenant, that there is no title, that there is no commitment, that there is no, you know, um, legitimacy then all kinds of issues happen because it's not something that was meant to be entered into lightly. There is no such thing as casual sex. So uh, we play with ourselves in more ways than one. Um, when we, <laughs> pun intended. Uh, exactly, pun intended. <laughs> we play, and I should say we play ourselves yes. when we do things outside of God's way, you know? And so for me, um, I remember I was uh, seeing this person um, and um, he was someone kind of high profile. And um, he had, we were, um, at the time, uh, he was married. Mm. Uh, yeah, so he was married and, um, the way that that happened was I had fallen in love with him prior to him getting married. So, um, we dated kind of briefly and, um, prior to that, I had been like praying, fasting for a husband, um, caught the bouquet at the wedding, um, had a bunch of prophetic words, met him, all this stuff came together. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh. This and is it was, him. Yeah. And it, he hit all these points that were like, oh my gosh. Um, and I say that because for anybody out there who ever thought it was the one and thought it was be the one because you went into it the right way yeah. and not the wrong way, yes. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. So um, all of that happened and then he disappeared. 
And when he disappeared, he got married. And I didn't know that. And and what, what time span between y'all kicking it for a little bit, he disappeared, and then you hear that he's married? Uh, so we, it was on this side. of So let's say maybe we met in, I'm going to get this wrong, but let's say we met, for instance, in like August or September, right. and then um, talking for a while, like for a few months, and then he disappears. I remember the spring came, and he disappeared. Um, and then from spring to I don't know, summer or something. And then um, and then what actually happened was I tracked him down because I didn't know what happened. And we had oh, talked. He had disappeared. He, had he disappeared. just ghosted. He, he ghosted. And um, I remember there were a couple of, um, uh, we had texted a couple times, but I didn't know what happened. And so I tracked him down because I just wanted to know what happened. But the way that I tracked him down private eye uh no uh i actually because he was someone who was in the private uh, he, he was someone who was in the public sector i was like oh i want to do an interview with him oh yeah so i scheduled an interview <laughs> and dead serious this is this is so true this is a true story i don't know why i'm doing this right now but true story i'm going to go interview him the whole thing is set up we've got the studio booked, the camera crews booked everything is booked and the day before one of my girlfriends calls me because she knew how i felt about him mm -hmm. and she was like you know hey Hey, um, um, he's married. And I'm like, no, no. And she's like, no, 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 he is. Uh, and I'm like, how do you, what do you, ah? and she's like, I just read an article. It just came out the newly married so-and-so. <gasps> and so I'm like, no, no, no. So I start Googling and I'm like, sure enough, I see the article. Then, um, I'm not going to say everything that happened after that, but let's just say he was married. And so I show up the next day and I do the interview even though he's married, right. et cetera. Um, and uh, that was really interesting, um, which I personally thought that I was very, very courageous because I could have just canceled, canceled the yeah, interview. Like, yeah. all right, I got and it. I found out. between your legs and ran exactly, off Exactly, like I'm gonna. I was like, no, we're gonna go ahead and do the interview. So we did the interview. It actually was a great interview. Um, wrapped that up and everything. And we end up going our separate ways, right? Or so we thought. And I think... Um, like I said, because he ghosted, he probably thought I'll never see her again, yeah. which is totally it, under any other circumstance. It would have been that way. Yeah. But what ended up happening was I got a really high profile job after that. And so uh, because of my job, we ended up seeing each other all mm. the time, which was unplanned mm. for both of us. Um, and I would just get assignments and I have to go and then he'd be there. And I. Ah! Right. How so, did you feel? Um, tortured. Honestly, that's a good word to explain. I, I, I really did. I felt tortured and um, and a lot of like my friends and family members had a great time with this because it, it was a tortured experience because I mm. had I had honestly fallen in love with him, which we're talking about. Guard your heart. Yeah, um, I would not have. OK, OK, this is going to be OK. This is a problem. I was about to say I would not tell anybody to do things the way that I did them and to just, you know, believe and trust, et cetera. But I just remembered I walked with God through this thing. I really did. And so because um, I'm like, this happened so long ago, I'm looking at the things and I'm like, wait a minute. No, you can't say that because I didn't just go off on a limb and I didn't just go of my own volition. and I didn't just decide, oh, my God, he's hot. Let's go for him. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was literally there was this whole line of things that lined checks, up just and, checks and checks and checks and all of it was spiritual. And so, and I was trying to do things in a spiritual way. Yeah. Um, and, and the prophetic word that was spoken over you. The prophetic and, and word. That, and that person coming under alignment with that prophecy. That too. And then there were a lot of different things, like I said, that he did too, that had me like, ooh, 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 check, check, that he check. Was, that he was doing to he you. He was doing as well. Yeah. So um, just signs I saw where I'm like, oh my gosh. So it made sense. Yeah, of course. So when I found out he was married, I was like, this doesn't make sense. And it's not matching my narrative of what I thought happened. Right. But at least I have an explanation yes. for what happened. He got married. OK, great. So now we're being thrown into or thrust into a lot of these environments where we're in the same space. And what happened was I'm thinking, OK, I'm praying for a husband. I want to get married. There's nothing I would like more than to spend the rest of my life with a man. And that's who I am. You know, I'm a one man woman. I'm, that's who I am. But we keep going into these environments. And every time we're in the environments like he's flirting with me. 
I'm trying to be good. He's trying to be bad. And I don't get that. You know what I mean? I'm like, dude, like, what the heck? And I really didn't get it. And it was funny. Some of my friends were like, you're so naive. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> but you know, they were. They were like, dude, did I, like, seriously? You know, but I'm just saying, because for me, it was like, if I found my best friend, can't nobody talk to me. Yeah. I don't like, I've been in relationships where I'm completely in love and literally you don't have a chance. Like whoever you are, I don't, I don't, you can name the sexiest guy on the planet, the richest guy on the, whatever. Yeah. I, you don't have a chance right. because I'm in love. Yes. Right. And so, so what, what, did, what, what did I say in the beginning when we were talking about guarding our hearts? I'm saying if you assume that everybody thinks the way you do and they have the same intentions that you do or they even conduct themselves in the way that you do, yeah. you're going to get hurt. Yes. And so I got hurt. And so um, I genuinely initially, it was really confusing being in these environments where, you know, he's flirting with me. It was also flattering. I'm not going to lie too, yeah. because I was in love with him. So that's what I wanted. Yeah. And so, um, um, but at the same time I had this conviction cause I'm like, dude, you're married, yeah. you know? So I'm like the confusion and the weight, but I don't, yeah. ah, yeah. you know, so you're going through all these changes. Um, and so that went on for a while, like, and I would say for like a year that we just kept showing up in these environments and stuff and, 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 um, and meeting and there was just this really, really strong chemistry and I'm constantly like leaving and praying and like, okay, God, I'm trying to be good, you know? And at, then at any point during that, were you feeling like he married the wrong person and clearly he he's, he's regretting it and he's choosing me. I didn't feel that way, but he communicated certain things, you know, um, <sighs> you got me all the way out there. Um, <laughs> he would call me at four o'clock in the morning and be like, you know, um, he would call me drunk at four o'clock in the morning and say things like, you know, I feel like I'm cheating on you or um, like with his wife, which made no sense to me. <laughs> um, or, you know, or uh, he would say that he messed up and he knew that and that he was sorry. Um, and like the worst thing he said was, you know, you can have my babies. And I'm like, let me just tell you that. <sighs> That was so, um, how do I, how did you get all this out of me? Okay. I'm like, why am I saying all this? Whatever. We're out here now. So we're out here. Somebody um, will get healed and delivered. The thing with him saying you could have my babies was particularly bittersweet because I wanted to have his babies. I was in love with him. And at the same time you're married. So none of this is possible. And honestly, like, these things would like make me cry, you know, know like it, it yeah. just, it broke my heart. And, and then there's another part of you going like, is this all a big game? Like, yes. I don't understand, you know, and just genuinely not understanding because I wouldn't do this. This is not the way that I would do it. And then I'm going, well, why don't you get your wife pregnant? You know, like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, what are you, what are you doing right now? So, um, and flattered. I'm not going to lie. I'm yeah. not going to, I'm not going to make myself look great. You know, like I, I was super flattered as well. Um, but so sad. Cause I'm like, this can't happen, you know, and this is not what I believe in. I don't do this. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So little further down the road, um, it got to a point where I couldn't take it. I was being torn apart emotionally. Mm. I'm a big heart, you know, and the reality is if I love you, then we have problems because I, I, <laughs> hey, I go all the way. So if I love you, we have problems. Yes, <laughs> yes, because I don't know. I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong about this, don't judge me, but I feel like I love in a way that people don't love anymore. No, no, when I, I understand, I overstand what you're saying because you, you've, you overstand what love is. And when you do it, it's not for play. It's not for games. You go all in and you say, listen, you got me. You got all of me. That. All that. of me. And so the problem was I can't give you all of me because you're already taken. Yes. So then I've got the frustration and the confusion of what are you doing? Like, I'm genuinely confused. So I finally was like, let me go ask a pastor. This is like a year in to the torture. And I'm like, let me go, let me go speak to my pastor. So I go speak with my youth pastor and he's like, okay, talk to me. He's like, I'm gonna talk to you. Like, you know, I got a, a cap to the back and like jeans on whatever. I'm gonna talk to you like a dude. Yeah. And I said, okay. And I said, am I allowed to go ask him what happened? Because the confusion of all this is tearing me yeah. apart. And he said, yes, 
You can go ask him. He said, but I want to prepare you. I was like, okay. He said, I want you to be prepared for the absolute best that could happen and the absolute worst that could happen. And I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, wait a minute. No, 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 not okay. Um, okay, so I know what the worst is that could happen. The worst is he lied. He doesn't like me. You know, he just did whatever and he's being a guy and he's playing blah, blah, blah. You know, it was all, it was all a farce. And that's what I was prepared for because that's the only thing that made sense. I'm like, right. you know, he's just playing you. Like, whatever. Um, um, but the other side, I realized I didn't know. So I was like, well, what's the best that could happen? And he said, the best is he could tell you that he loves you, that he always loved you, that he still loves you, and that none of this was a lie. And Terrace, when I say I almost took my shoe off and threw it at him, I, I was so... I don't even know. Like I, in my body right now, I get chills because I'm like, no one had ever prepared me for that. Would I, that be best? I, no. That's what I'm saying. That seems like that would be the no. worst. It seems like the 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 <sighs> the best is the truth of what you already felt, which the typical guy does, which is, hey, I'm playing games with you. Hey, you know, you were you were here just for a season. You know, you're a placeholder until the real one came along. Right. That's that's. Best to sit there and marry somebody and say I, I, I genuinely and they and they be totally honest that I genuinely love you, but married somebody else. That that that's in your head just more confusion. It 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 was <laughs> destructive. <laughs> yeah, it was it was dehumanizing. It was, and I was angry because no one ever told me that. Like my initial thought was, wait a minute, that's possible. I didn't even know that was possible. Oh, it was very possible. Like, I literally, I, I remember, I was like, I've watched 20 years of the Oprah show. I never saw this. What the, you know what I mean? <laughs> ah! I was so mad. I was so I mad. Never saw this. And then I'm like, what is wrong with men? You will like marry somebody and you're in love with somebody else? <laughs> like, what, what are you thinking? What the, who does that? You know what I mean? And so, but again, because I'm like, if I met the love of my life, can't nobody. You can't yeah. tell me nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Get away. I don't like you. Go yeah. away. You're threatening my paradise. Yes. I found paradise. Threatening and my I, paradise. Yes. That's good. Let that simmer like, right there. Literally, I, I found everything that I have been looking for. This is what I mean when I say everybody doesn't think the same way you do. I'm going, if I got married, I found everything everything I've been looking for that part everything and so why would I jeopardize everything I'm looking for for if it was a joke if yeah. I don't like her if yeah. you are a place like if you're nothing then why I, would yeah. I hey jeopardize I'm happy all yeah, yeah all of that and then yeah then to be like you know have my child I was like yeah. come on um so and again I'm not gonna lie I was flattered by that like that sounded good to me so what um, did he say to you? you you approached him and asked him a question so yes yeah, so I asked him um I asked him about what had happened and he basically said what the pastor had said he basically said he never lied he said that he did love me he said he felt a total connection he said you know that everything he'd ever said to me was real and what happened with us was real um and then you know he said that he felt like um she was being open and communicative about wanting him and needing him and that i wasn't and i and he's right in terms of I wasn't like I want you or pursuing him or going hard for him, partly because he was a high profile person by that point. And I'm like, I'm not a groupie and I'm yeah. not going to like chase you or hunt you down, et yeah. cetera. And so like, why would I do that? You know? And I remember telling him some things about masculinity and femininity and he was like, whatever, none of that means anything to me, you know? So I'm like, all right, well, that's all I got. You know, I don't know what else to tell you, you know? So fine, I blew it. I blew it. My you say, approach you is off. You you know. about masculinity yeah, and I was like, you know, I mean, the guy's supposed to chase squirrels. You're supposed to like hunt me down, and I'm not supposed to be. He's like, yeah, no, cut all that out. So, and I was like, I mean, frankly, it worked for her because she was telling him, I want you, I need you, all of that, and he believed her. So I was like, there you go. You know, not that he shouldn't have, like respectfully. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so that too became even more sad for me because I remember thinking, you know, maybe this would have happened had I been more vocal, um, you know, but no, no, I don't think so. Like after the fact, yeah. I don't think so. I think what happened was supposed to happen. Um, and I think, um, I think he was, you know, less than um, integral with 
with, I think, a lot of what he was struggling with, too. And I think he's just a human who was struggling as well. Right. And so, um, Hedge of the Lord. Okay, so I remember, I remember there was this night... And um, we were we showed up at like an award show and we were um, and I was doing interviews or whatever. And uh, we see each other. There's the chemistry again. Everything's insane or whatever. And one of the weird things that used to happen, this is why I say when you're there, there's all these little kismet experiences that you have that go, oh, my God, that too, that too. And so one of the things that would happen a lot is we would be color coordinated. Wow. Without don't know each other. Don't you know, didn't talk before an event, nothing like that. We'd show up at an event and we would be like color coordinated. And I remember that happened that night and so he's looking me up and down and like he wants to take me home and i'm like i this is a problem you know <laughs> this is just a problem and so we do the interview you know we get through that and then um it's like you know after party heck no i'm out of here you know i'm going home to my hedge to the hedge of the lord so i can go guard my heart right and so i had a roommate at the time and we were accountable for each other. Yeah. We were accountability partners. And that was so that neither one of us, you know, would end up in situations that were either too big for us, too much for us, et cetera. And we're both being real human. Yeah. Like, hey, temptation yeah. is a very real thing. And so um, so I remember I got home and I'm looking around the house like I'm trying to find my Blackberry. And so, where's my Blackberry? And I hear Holy Spirit say, Denai, you don't need your Blackberry. Like, go to bed. And I'm like, no, no, God, I want my I want my Blackberry. And so I'm looking around and I'm like, the car, that's where it is. It's in the car. So I, I go outside, I go to the car and I go find my Blackberry. It's in the car. And I look at the, the I, I pick it up and I look into it and it's like, it's him. And, mm. and the text said something like, baby, please come over. No, oh. It was something like that. And my stomach just drops, mm, you mm, know, mm. out of my left foot, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you know, and I'm just, ah, and Ooh. again, I want to go. No, of course. I am not going to lie. I wanted nothing more. I'm like, I would love, love, love to go, but I cannot. Yeah. Right. And so I'm sitting here in the middle of like the night because it's like 12, 15 a.m. And I'm in the dark, in the street, screaming, cursing him <laughs> out, you know, like, ah, how dare you, ah, you know, and um, but I didn't go. I didn't go. I went back upstairs and I put my phone away and I went to bed and I remember Telling that story to several friends of mine, everybody saved, everybody sanctified, everybody, everything. And everybody was like, oh, you're crazy because I would have gone. Just because of who he was? Um, Not necessarily because of who he was. Some people, it was because of how I felt about him. They so, knew so, how I felt so about him. So they say him. just based upon, and this is, where, this is where the world is just throw it off. Not considering her at all, the wife of saying that just because they saying basically you should be selfish with, your, with, with the desires of your heart, and he has the right to be selfish too, clearly, if they're saying it's okay for you to go there. So y'all just be selfish, no matter what's destroyed. In yes, the line of fire. I would say that some people were there, for other people it wasn't that, that, it wasn't that intentional, what you're saying, it wasn't that intent. For other people, they were saying, I'm weak. They were acknowledging their own weaknesses and saying, I would not have been strong okay, enough. Okay, so they're saying that they wouldn't. Yes, but, but were they encouraging you to go? Is the question. No, I, okay. So a couple of yeah, a couple of friends. Yes, a couple of friends were like, "Don't call." Like I would call a couple of friends, you know, like looking for prayer and encouragement, and they're like, "Don't call me because I'm gonna tell you go over there and have his baby." And I'm, ah, can I get some help here? Like this is, that's not what I want to hear. You, you, exactly. You, you drug your so, name through that. Yeah, I'm not gonna pretend. Yes, a couple people were like that, but no, I remember like one person who was like, "I wouldn't have made it." It wasn't the intent you're talking about. It was more of. Their uh, acknowledging their own weakness. Yeah, he was literally like, I, I would not have been that strong. Yeah. Because I said, you know, <laughs> when I thought back on it, the thing that made me not go was the hedge of the Lord. It was the fact that I had an accountability partner. Right. And what I knew was, I'm, I won't be back until 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you know, in the morning. <laughs> keep, keep yeah, that, keep the the next tonight. morning. Exactly. Thank you. Whatever. <laughs> and when I get hey, home in the morning. Later. Hello. <laughs> And, well, whenever I get home, I'm going to have to have an explanation. And this is someone who, pay attention, I have given permission to hold me accountable in the area of my weakness during a time of sobriety and cleanliness Good. to just say, 
hold me accountable because I, I know that I'm weak in this area Good. and I don't want to fall. Good. That is my heart's intent. Good. And so when you put people in place like that for you, when you get into the fire, they're there. And I, I, now this is what I will say. Mm. I am not that strong. Had she not been there, I would have gone. Has I would have gone. I, I, I would have gone because I didn't. It was too much. It was the way that I felt about him was too much, and it was too much for me to feel that way and have him coming for me, yeah. like drawing me. I didn't. I didn't. That's the reason why you know the four a.m. phone calls. Like those work. Like they when you I said they, work. they worked. When I say they worked, it's like <laughs> I never went to him, but it was planting seeds. It did. It was it, just chipping I'm away. I'm not going to pretend it didn't work on me. Yeah. It absolutely worked on me, you know? Um, and I had a father figure in my life at the time who, when I told him that in particularly, just that thing with him being like calling you at four o'clock in the morning, drunk, talking about you got my baby. He, he was mad, yeah. like really angry, like father protector yeah. angry because he knew what was in me and he knew my desires. And then he also knew how I felt about this person. And to that extent, I will say this, um, um, I didn't go, so I'm okay. But I will say to men everywhere, because men know how to. Yeah. You have to be careful with the influence and the favor that God gives you with people. Yeah. When a woman is in love with you and you know good and well that you have nothing to offer her. Yeah. And let me qualify that because people get crazy today and they will be like, well, I offered her this. <laughs> Um, being a side piece, having an affair, having a mistress, having someone who is not your wife, who you cannot give everything to, including and especially legitimacy. Ooh. Yes. Legitimacy. legitimacy. Um, is not giving her anything. She has nothing. You have nothing. You know what I mean? And you all also need to start thinking really carefully about assigning women roles that we never auditioned for. Because I was not praying to be a side piece and I was not trying to be a side piece and I was not raised to be a side piece. That's not what I want. And so like mm. stop putting things on people that they don't want because you messed up or you did something in a certain way. And now you just want to be greedy and have a little bit of everything. It's not fair to people. You said, so when you say auditioning, when you think about it as auditioning for a role, mm -hmm. then what responsibility does a woman have for going to audition for said role when she knows he's married? I didn't know he was married and he wasn't married when I started <laughs> auditioning. So thank you. <laughs> I didn't audition for a role with a married man. Thank you very much. Well, he got married. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He got, he got, he got well, married. And, oh, I'm so glad you said that. And yeah. when he got married, what did I do? Start the hands back, hands back. But you was answering them 430 uh, calls. I did answer some 430 calls. So that's I, true. I, that's a callback. I didn't know what he, I didn't know what he <laughs> in, wanted. In the but, world of auditioning, you know what? that's maybe, called a callback. No, no, no. I'll, 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 and I'll own that. I did. I did pick up the, I'm in love with him. I, I don't know, know what you want me to do. I didn't go. Yeah. I didn't go, but you're right. I did pick up the phone. And that's the bad thing about it. And I've said that before to women. I said, and it's been women who have been entered, you know, that were interested in me. And I say, allow me to protect you from me. Mm -hmm. Because I knew how they felt about me and I knew I didn't have nothing to offer. I would always I, say, I would always say, I have hard penis and bubble gum and I'm fresh out of bubble gum. Okay, that I would, would be, say that. <laughs> I would say that. Too. That would have been awesome. That is not my story. I wish that that were my testimony. That was not my testimony. Um, and so, yeah, I. Did I do everything perfectly? Absolutely not. Um, did I keep an affair from happening? Yes, you did. Absolutely. And so, um, I am not perfect. No. Um, and I wished that I had never, I don't want to cry. I'm like, I know how are you telling your tears? You don't want to cry. Um, like <laughs> y'all get out of here. Go away. I'm not trying to, um, I wished that I had never tears, been in that, that, that experience, but I was, yeah. and let's go back to, cause you said what, what, um, what is a woman responsible for or what can we hold the woman accountable for? Um, I think that the woman has to be held accountable for holding the line. Mm. I think she does. Um, maybe I shouldn't have picked up phone calls. Um, that's I'm open to that. Um, you have to hold the line. And I will say this. And there were a lot of times where I did this. You do have to think about the wife. 
You have yes. to think about the wife. You always have to think about the wife um, because the reality is I didn't go into this to hurt somebody. Yes, I didn't. And I didn't want to hurt someone. Even when I was in it, I didn't want to hurt anyone. It didn't have anything to do with me hurting someone else. It had everything to do with how I felt about him. Yes. And how I felt about him based on now we get deep and I don't want to go here. My relationship with God. Then I talk about it. Okay, so I'm going to preface this by saying I still don't have all the answers. Good. And I'm also going to say I know that this is going on the internet, so I'm really not seeking answers from anybody out there. Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm really not. Yeah, thank you. Um, and this thank happened you, a no, long time ago, and it's it's a sore spot, kind of like with the Shunammite woman. Mm. Um, mm. The Shunammite woman, who I adore and who I got so much um, mm, encouragement from during this period, because Elijah came to her. She had a she she was a, a wealthy woman and she built a room under her house because the man of God used to visit all the time. And so finally she said, well, he keeps coming. Let's just build him a room. So she builds a room on the house and then um, and they're just being good to him, being good to him. And then one day he comes to her and he says, what do you need? And she's like, I don't need nothing. I'm good. You know, and he's like, nah, I know she don't have a kid. You're going to have a kid. And she's like, hey, 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 excuse me. Excuse me. Don't go meddling. That's a sore spot for me. I've already given that up. It's gone. It's not happening. I'm fine. I, I'm, I'm good. I've cried myself to sleep. I'm not crying anymore. Leave me alone. He's like, no, you're going to have a kid. So she has a kid. Her and her husband conceive, and she's older as well. So it's a miracle kid. And so her and her husband conceive, and um, thank you. They conceive, and then the kid grows up. He's like 18 years old. He's in the field working with his daddy, and he's like, Daddy, my head, my head, and he just falls to the ground like an aneurysm, just falls falls out, right, dead. And um, his daddy says uh, to the servants, take him to his mama because his mama's the one, you know, who prayed for him and her faith got him there and all of that. And so she goes, uh, and she grabs a horse, <laughs> goes to the man of God and says to him, I told you, yep. I was fine. Yes. You did not listen to me. Now I'm, uh, now I'm, you know, now my hope is alive. Now my heart is with this boy and you're going to go save my boy. And he's like, okay, I'll send a prayer and a blessing. I know you won't. You're going to come what, personally. What you to? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll send a prayer and a blessing ahead and he'll be fine. No, you won't. And she literally like, you, you come with me, you know? And so they go back and, uh, and sure enough, um, he prays over the boy and the boy, the boy gets up and she takes her son and, um, and off they go. Um, and I love and resonate with the portion of, I never asked you. Teach. For anything. Teach. You came to me and you bothered me. And I wasn't asking for anything when you bothered me. So the part of the story that that relates to is when I said there was this pre-period prior to me meeting him, um, and I would pray and fast and doing all this stuff, you know, um, and I was praying for a husband and I had stopped believing because I had had several broken hearts prior to that or yeah. disappointments. And God was like, nah, I need you to believe, you know, I need you to keep believing and I need you to have incredible faith because I want to do something, you yes. know? And I remember there was a time in the dating period where he had disappeared. He was on a different coast. And so he was on a different coast and he had disappeared and we had just had like a really lovely time. Um, and he, when I say disappeared, I mean, he left and he was like recording and stuff. And so I had to, um, uh, I remember I called him or something and he was just weird that day. Like it was weird. It was almost like I was bothering him or something, you know? And I was like, okay. And so I got off the phone and I remember thinking, 
maybe this was all in my head. Maybe this was just me. Maybe he doesn't have feelings for you, you know, because that's just like a weird energy. It was almost like I was bothering him, like I said. And so I'm like, all right, cool. You know what? Done. I'll leave him alone. No big deal. At this time, I am not in love with this man. Okay. And I'm like, cool. No big deal. Done. Right. Mm -hmm. Go home that night. I, um, I had, uh, uh, I, I started praying and I heard God say, um, why don't you, uh, why don't you, why don't you pray? And so I'm, I'm praying. And then I heard him say, why don't you speak in your, your spiritual language? Yes. I said, okay. So I'm doing that. Um, and then, and I'm getting the story wrong because this is so long ago, but anyway, I'm trying to get these details. Um, but I remember I started speaking in my spiritual language and, um, he had specifically said prior to that, why don't you pray for him? Cause I was done praying and he said, pray for him. And I said, okay. And so I started speaking in my spiritual language, like I said, and then I felt like I was done. When I felt like I was done, I heard the Holy Spirit say, um, do you want him? Do you want him? I had just heard T.D. Jakes preach on a similar message and talking about the Holy Spirit and talking about, you know, the things that God will ask you for. Um, and, and he's not going to ask you if you want something unless you can absolutely have it. And so again, remember, I've already mm -hmm. cried my heart to sleep. I am not in love with this man at this time. He has been kind of rejecting. And so I'm like, okay, I'm done. And here you call me to, do you want him? And I said, okay, sure, God, I'll play. I said, yes, if. I said three things. Number one, if he's your will, because I had failed that test before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we have, we all failed that thank test. Thank you. I was like, times. if he is your will, I said, if he um, is who he is when we are together, if that's who he actually is. That's a good one. Oh, that's good. That's a, that's a character thing. That says, boy, your character is who you are when no one else is looking. That's, I want to know all of that. I'm like, if that ain't who he is, no. You know, and I would have no way of knowing. Right. Um, so if that's who he is, then yes, that's number two. And number three was yes, as long as there's nothing coming down the line, you know me, Lord. You know my ends from my beginnings. You're Alpha and Omega. You yeah. stand on the, the end of time. You know what's going on. If there's nothing coming down the road that's going, I, that I can't handle. And I honestly felt like God said, okay. And I felt like God said, you can have this. That is what fueled so much of what happened later. And it is also why it was so difficult yeah. for me. Because I, I felt like I was good. After that, I fell in love because of you. Yeah. Because I thought it was safe to yes. open up my heart. We're talking about guard your heart. Yes. Well, how do I guard my heart from God? You know what I mean? That's good. That's good. And it was the most painful experience um, spiritually because so many people that I sought counsel from spiritually didn't understand. And when I was going through a lot of the confusing stuff, a lot of people, I mean, I'm sorry, I was Job. They were just, I was like, miserable comforters are you all. Well, your long-winded speeches never end. It was it was like that, I promise you. <laughs> your um, long-winded speeches I, never I end. I love that scripture. Well, your long-winded speeches never end. Um, <laughs> sounds like Shakespeare. It does. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, um, and it was because people try to help, but when they try to help, <laughs> they use their own reasoning yeah. and this this was really interesting a lot of people needed me to be wrong so that god could be right and so yes and so it became a tax on my faith well did you hear him right well do you how do you know that he said that what if he didn't say that well what if he said this instead well what if what if what if and i'm going do you understand that every time that you attack my ability to hear from god you it are attacking my entire Faith. My entire spiritual walk. When I tell you, uh, when I, oh Lord Jesus, yeah, I've been there before. I've been there before, and that thing makes you question everything that you know about God. I questioned my name. I didn't know anything. I and it got so bad. I remember one of my best friends. I went through. Mm -mm -mm. Um, 
a really hard time later. Um, my mama had a had a had a brain aneurysm, and she's the maker of our family. And I didn't think I was going to make it. I remember I got on the phone with my girlfriend, and I was like you know, talking to her and she, we're walking through this and I was like, I don't think I've ever been this bad. And she said, no, 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 I've seen you worse. <laughs> I said, I said, when have you seen me worse? She said, when you went through that, talking about this, yeah. she said, I thought we were going to lose you. Really? She said, I thought we were going to lose you. I didn't, I didn't know if you were going to make it. I genuinely did not know. Wow. And I know that she is telling the truth because God was all that I had Hope was all that I had yeah. and my hope was taken away. Yeah. And so I didn't understand the point anymore. I didn't know like, why am I here and who cares and love doesn't matter and none of this stuff matters. So like, what do like, what are we doing anyway? Like, what is it? This is all ridiculous. This is all stupid. Like none of it makes any sense. And then I also had this huge thing of feeling like I failed you. Cause I didn't do it right. You know, like I'm not, I'm not even like, <laughs> you felt who God. Yeah, I did. I felt like I, I felt like it was, it just felt like the worst. It felt like I could explain like why I'd been through so many other things in my life. Yeah. This just seemed like a big waste yes because i was like i didn't even do it the way that i would like to have done it you know to have come out scathing clean you know <laughs> and perfection i don't know that's the per perfect thing it's like nobody's perfect but i, I had that all. thing too um but it, it just felt like a stain on me the whole thing just felt like why did i go through that i don't understand and and because i struggled in my walk I didn't, I was like, why would you let something come to me that would make me, because after that, I was like, I, I did, that would make me finish that sentence, want distance from you. Because after that, I was, I, I was like, you know what? You're cool. You're God and everything. I can't undo anything that I've seen. I've seen yeah. too much to say you're not God, but leave me alone for a minute. Yes. I need to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Seriously, I need a break, holla back, leave me alone. I can't, like, I can't, I can't do anything and I can't believe not right now. Did you go through a stage of savagery where you said, I'm finna turn to a no. savage? No, and to God be the glory. I remember, huh, I, I remember being, um, we were at a rap party for a show I was on. And I remember, um, and I, w I was hot then. I was like working out and looking good and doing all the right. <laughs> so I'm looking good, but everything inside of me is destroyed. And all these guys were coming out of nowhere. And I remember this, re this really nice guy. And um, he's talking to me and everything. And I'm just like, whatever, you know. And, and he's like, can I take you out? And I said, listen to me. I am distraught. I am destroyed. And I could destroy you. You need to leave me alone. That's good. You need to leave me alone. I was like, I am not in a place to. So, no, I. Could I have gone savage? Yes, I absolutely could have. There were, there, I had a lot of attention from a lot of people. And the way that I was feeling, I felt like God owed me something. And I'll admit that that's like an arrogance. Um, but I was broken. And that's the reality of where I was. Um, and so I could have. But no, I, for me, I've always wanted... I've always tried to give away what I needed. Mm. And so even Hold on, in they got, my- They got to sit with yeah. that. Yeah. I've always tried to give away what I needed. Yeah. And so what I needed was a heads up. Hey, I'm not good for you. Leave me yes. alone. Yes. You know? Bless people with the truth. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm not going to do that to somebody else. I'm not going to destroy somebody because I'm destroyed. Yes. And so, you know, I gave him what I, I gave him what I needed. I needed someone to look out for me. Yes. You know, when they knew they had nothing to offer. So that's what I did. So no, I, I didn't become a savage. I, I haven't had a savage. How, how long do you think it took you to get past that? To actually forgive yourself? You don't to know. forgive God? What, still not there? Oh, no, 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 no. It took like seven years. Which lets me understand even more how deep you love. 
because this wasn't some puppy love. This wasn't some type of, it, it was none of that. You said, when I love, I love hard. Mm -hmm. How many times in your life have you ever been in that place where you love like that? So I did that. And then I did again after that. Um, and a similar thing happened, but he didn't marry somebody else. Um, and so before we get off the first guy, yes, where, where, where is he at now? Is he still married or no, what's going on? No, they divorced. Um, so, and I think that was, you know, I think that, you know, trying to, I'm trying to be respectful as well. Right. Um, I think that he probably was not ready to be married. And I think that he probably married for the wrong reasons. And at the same time, you know, I don't know. I can't say. But I, I think the way that he dealt with me, if I were married to him, that would not have been okay. Uh, yeah. And what I know is that had I been down, it would have gone down. And it's like, you know, I probably... It just, it would have gone down. Yeah, yeah. And so my point being, it could have been an affair. And for me to have that kind of access to him, something's already wrong. Of course. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So I have a feeling that it wasn't just me. Of course. And what I've learned, see, when things were happening, I was thinking he was getting away with things. And I remember having this conversation with my brother after I found out about the divorce and first of all, I was like, okay, God, I didn't, hey, I didn't have nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with that. Hey, I'm good. man, you know, I, hey, my hands clean, you know. Um, <laughs> but I also felt like, and this is no disrespect to him at all, but I also felt like justice. Yeah. Um, in 1 Corinthians uh, 13, 4 through 8, my favorite, it's the love scriptures. Um, it also says that love rejoices with um what is it when when righteousness and truth prevail yes yeah there was something right about someone who is not taking marriage seriously oh, yeah. not having the blessing of that marriage and right. i say that carefully again because i'm not trying to be judgmental but i'm acknowledging of course, just what, it, what i saw and i'm saying again the whole time i was like well man if i was you i'd be like so happy you know i don't understand um you know but it, he has his own walk so no they they did not make it um and and i remember someone coming to me and being like oh you must be happy and i was like no and i'm like are you crazy and they're like wait a minute why are you not happy and i'm like somebody needs to get some love around here. Talk about it. Talk somebody about it. like I, I'm not a hater. Yeah. If you're not going to love me, freaking love her, please. Yeah, somebody love, her right. love. It love was, her properly. It was that it was just, you know, I believe in love. I believe in marriage. I believe in all of that. And I wanted that for him. If that's what he found, you yeah. know? So it just, I, I don't, I, I, I do love deeply. I loved so deeply that I prayed for them a lot, a lot, a lot. Like God would constantly be like, okay, pray for them. Okay. Pray for them again. Ah, okay. Pray for them again. Yeah. And it was, you know, pray for those who spitefully use you and pray yeah. for those who uh, bless those who curse you. And, and then it was like help and all this different stuff. It's like, no, I really, I really, really loved That's and good. poured out love in this entire situation. And so often it felt like, I don't get anything for the love that I'm giving. And I don't mean him. I mean, anything. It was yeah. just like, Lord, what are you doing? I don't understand what you're doing. And I don't understand why you have me in this place and why you're having me pray for this person. And I, and, and to be honest, I don't even know why we met. Like, I'm not sure why that happened. I'm not sure. This is where I, my anger and my, frustration with God came from was because I felt betrayed. I felt like I, there was particularly after a lot of the, you know, pray for them, pray for them. It felt like you're their God. You're not my God. Mm. God you are, God. you're their God because you're, you keep asking me to do for them and to pray for them and to be good to them. And any place that I can bless them to bless them, I'm doing all I'm this good. and I don't understand. And this is not what I asked for. And by the way, it's not what you told me. 
that this was going to be. So I don't understand anything that's going on, you know? And that's what you're saying earlier where you say you still don't have the answers to this and people, please don't try to give Please don't, answer. don't, yeah, 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 don't. You don't have it either. I promise you, whoever you are, you don't have it either. Um, so just, yeah, don't, don't, yeah. Don't write me no notes after service. Don't write me no notes after service. So, slide it to me. Don't, yeah, don't no, it just, <laughs> here's the thing. Um, Maybe they just need a prayer. Yep. Maybe God just wanted to use you as a vessel and, and have you pray for somebody else. Maybe somebody else would not have made it through that. And he wanted you to do that. I and think maybe you are sitting here on this podcast to heal some, a lot of women out here that have gone through that or are thinking about going through that because they're in that same situation and they need you to be the other voice opposite of their friends. That's encouraging them to get into this adulterous that's relationship. True. And now you're Don't speaking and they go, thank you, God. Because yeah. think about how you would have felt if you were broken and it took you seven years. Think about had you broke their covenant by having sex with them. Think how what that could have done to you. I, to be honest with you, would not have made that. I think yeah. that I think that had I actually gone forth, I either would have gone insane or I probably would have like committed suicide or something yeah. because of the guilt. Like it just that I don't have I, I don't have that. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, and that's why God said, I'll never put more on you than you can bear because he knows your threshold. Yeah. He knows that as much as you love and how much integrity you have, oh that if you cross gosh. over that integrity thing, then you like, I am a home wreck. And then that, they get a divorce. I just destroyed love. Part. This is everything. And then Walking you start living all of that on for you? the rest of your life. You thinking, and then when any type of guy mishandles your heart, you go, this is I my karma. It. This is my karma. Yep, there I'm you supposed go. to do this. And there now you, you live this re re residual pain no, of heartbreak true. for You're the rest of your right life. It's that. crazy. I, I couldn't have taken that. Um, and no one can. And I, I also think um, with what you said before, if there's anybody listening, A, it's not worth it. Don't do that, number one. Um, but number two, you don't get anything. <laughs> yeah. You don't get anything. And by that, I mean literally – all of scripture is about legitimacy. Yeah. It's about a name. It's about a covenant. It's about blood. It's about birth order. It's about birthright. It's there's now you teach you, don't, you, teach you don't don't get anything. There's no, think about it. There's no place for you to appear. If he wrongs you, no place, you don't have any rights. He could completely wrong you. And there's not one person on the planet who's going to feel sorry for you. There's not one person on the planet who's going to take your side. There's nobody other than your mama who's going to be like, you know, you know come here, let like, me give you a hug. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you, you won't even tell your mama that you done did exactly. that. Exactly. I didn't raise you that way. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the, exactly. So point being, no, there's, you don't get anything. Um, you don't get birthdays. You don't get holidays. You don't get, mm. you don't, you know, you don't get appearances. You don't get family pictures. You don't get pictures, period. You can't post nothing. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> nobody knows about you. There was a wonderful, um, um, oh, Sal Lathan yeah. was in, uh, uh, the family that prays yeah. Tyler Perry's family that prays. And there's this wonderful scene where, um, she's been having an affair and her man's w wife comes in and, um, whew, she was, she was, they had, let's say they had a standing appointment at the Biltmore at like three o'clock, right? Yeah. So she goes to the room where she's normally at and she's like taking her shoes off and, and she looks up and the wife comes in instead of the husband. And the speech she gave was cold, but basically she let her know, number one, this is over. Number two, you don't have anything. You never had anything. And all that you had was in this room. Ooh. Your entire life with him is consumed to this this room this that's all you it's it's the room bub she you broke know, it down like literally, that literally like uh, all that you have of him is in this room and now it's gone because you know i showed up and you know he'll never see you again and sure enough he didn't like she ran screaming and crying behind him and there were a lot of things you know uh, that <laughs> happened there but the point being God, yeah wow. exactly everything that you had was in this room like you're a secret i don't want to be a secret you know what I mean? I don't want to be a secret. I don't want to be hidden. Um, you don't hide a lamp. You put it on a hill and you you spread it out yeah, for all to see. Shine. And you know what I mean? And so there are just so many different things. But mm. um, yeah, I think 
I don't have the answers. I really, really don't. I think, you know, God loves us. And, and when we say things like, um, and I used to say this all the time, when we say things, when you're in worship, like, you know, choose me, Lord, take me, Lord, um, test me, Lord, mm. you know, um, try me, etc. You never know what he's going to use to try you with or to test you with, yes. um, or to choose you with. And for me, um, there was a lot that was tied in with that too, but I'm going to, I'm going to keep that to myself. The beautiful thing about, um, even listening to you share that story and, you know, I've been on your live and I talked about being that dude that was, uh, cheating on my wife. I mean, it is, it is the truth. And I, I used to have this rule. Don't ask me about my wife. I'm not leaving her. Yeah. I'll I just be like extremely blunt. I'll yeah. be like, don't ask, don't ask if everything is right or why am I cheating? I'm cheating on her because I'm here with you right now. Period. Okay, so so everybody knew you were cheating, and they knew that the you girl, were married. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Okay, I, no, I I'm never, just saying I don't I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. It was it was yes, yes. And the reason I say that too is because at that time, a lot of married men were hitting on me. I remember yeah, because that because they they it's, it's the it, in the entertainment industry. Of course, I was touring around the I was touring around the country with plays and doing all this stuff before I got married, and I would see guys cheating on their wives all the time, and I would always. I can't believe you cheating on your wife. Why would you do that? Why get married if you're going to cheat? Why would you? And they, and they will always look at me and be like, wait, you get married and see if you say that. And I was like, I'm never going to say that because I'm, uh, and I used to always just, I'd just be like very self-righteous. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Then I got married and I became that which I despised. Yeah. And But the thing that I would do that made me a better cheater uh -oh. is that I was more upfront about it. These other guys would uh, lie and they would tell they would tell the women or whatever. Yeah, me and my wife, we separated right now. Yeah, you separated because like, she's, she's there and you're right here. That's right, the only separation right, that it was. Right, right. And when you go home, you're going to be right back with her. Yeah. So don't, don't play these games. And I used to tell those guys, I was like, see, if you was a true player, you could just be honest about it. Like, yeah. why are you lying to women? women yeah. let a woman know what she's signing up for that okay well it, it, cheating is absolutely wrong it's wrong it's right. wrong it's wrong i'm not condoning it etc however not however in addition because <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to erase anything before the butt in addition um I preferred that right. because I ran from all those guys. That's why I said a lot of married men were hitting on me, but I would run from them when I found out they were married. Yeah. And I will say, this is what I didn't like. No full disclosure. Like you're at least doing full yeah. disclosure. What I didn't like is that that was the time in my dating life where I had to modify my questionnaire <laughs> because... <laughs> Yeah, they actually ask yeah, if they were married. Literally, because they would lie like dogs. Like, you'd be like, um, you know, are, are you married? No. Or, you know, but so it'd be like this. Are you married? No. And he's not married. Then it'd be like, okay. Then you find out he's not married, but he's in a relationship. Or he's not married, but he has a baby's mom. That he or lives he, with. That, that part, you know. Or he has someone he lives with who thinks that she's in a relationship with him, but he's not in a relationship with her. So it's like, you just had to keep adding to the questionnaire. Like with every scenario, there's a new lie, and it's basically like Negro. You know what I'm trying to find out? Is there anybody that can claim you, dude? You know what I mean? And you, and then watch them in their eye. Well, I mean, technically, Take, she can't. Nah, I gotta go, gotta go. You know. Gotta go. So it's yes, too much. It's yes. Too much. But no, I like the guys who say. I'm married, yeah. so I can run. Right. Um, and I think that's what the men need to be held accountable for. Yeah. The women need to be held accountable for is once you know he's married, no, get out of there. Yeah. Get out of there. R you don't you don't want to be with a married man. There's nothing there for you, first of all. At all. Um, but secondly, I always wonder about like the women who um not only are cheating, but are then hoping that he's gonna leave her for yeah. you. Yeah. And I'm like, as a Coach <laughs> with relationships, let me just tell you what just happens. Tell the percentages. What, what goes now? What happens is if you do get him, if you meet a guy and you are cheating with him when you get him, and this is whether he's married or single, but he has a woman and you're cheating. If he cheats with you to have her, he doesn't trust you. He doesn't I, trust you. I you're tell you're, that you're all absolutely the time. not trustworthy. He knows that you have no virtue. Yep. He knows that you have no integrity. He knows that you have no honor because you knew about her. The <laughs> yeah. only way that that is different is if he lied to his teeth and you actually don't know about her. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because then he's like, well, she didn't know I lied to her, et cetera. I set her up. But if you know, I'm telling you, then it gets really ugly <laughs> because 
the amount of disrespect that he piles on to you throughout your relationship because yep. he basically sees you as someone who didn't respect yourself there it is. and who didn't respect him or his and I know I there's know, a lot of crazy, women yeah but it's the truth they are you the hit, girls are going to be like wait a minute you're cheating with me it's the How truth come I'm booming? and I'm like because listen men are hypocrites yeah they're hypocrites because we say that <laughs> we always <laughs> our biggest fear is that that would happen back to I us know. so then we choose a woman that's willing to do that then we go she may do that to us exactly so then they don't trust you because yeah. they go oh you got some character issues yep. I know I got some character issues I'm supposed to have it but you ain't supposed to have it as a woman ain't and that so interesting he, yeah, I'm so supposed he, to have character <laughs> issues he said so to a woman he like man I ain't gonna marry her I can't be with her because that's she, exactly she'll sleep it. with a married man that's exactly like, it you Even though, married you were, man. I know it was you though I know yeah No, no, no. <laughs> I say that all the time I say that to the women all the time I'm like no men don't say things like you know um, she only only did it with me they go no, no no that's what she does that's how she is you know what i mean <laughs> there ain't nothing special about me exactly yeah right. i'm like no women are the absolute opposite we're like i'm special and they're like no no you're not i do that with everybody but you know it's, it's the absolute opposite we're insane we are completely insane no it's so true though so it's, have you ever have you ever have you ever counseled like a couple that came out of an adulterous relationship yes. that actually trying to make it work yeah and i haven't seen that work yet i haven't seen that work yet um when i first got to la i lived with a couple who i did not know that that was what the issue was uh -oh. and i wrote i'll never forget one day i asked the husband what's wrong with your wife <laughs> i literally i was like seriously what's wrong with her and he was like oh i kind of screwed that up and i'm like what like talk to me and he was like well when i met her she was my secretary and i was like oh and he's like and i was married to another woman and i had two daughters and and he said and i started messing around with her and he said my wife found out and so she divorced me and my two daughters don't talk to me anymore and that's mm. why you've never met them they won't step foot in this house uh, so he lost a lot. And then the woman he did get, who was the secretary, yeah. who was now the wife, I'm um, going, you know, um, when I said what's wrong with her, the reason I was asking is because she was nervous, anxious, worried, fearful, miserable, bitter, Dang. suspicious, a lot of things. And you just peeped that. Just uh, I lived with them. I was, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I rented a room in their home, you know, for like the first year as in LA. Um, and yeah, she was a lot of things. She was not a happy person. Said, What's wrong and that's with why her? I said, What's wrong with her? And he basically said, You know, um, she doesn't trust anyone and she doesn't, she basically thinks, you know, everybody's out to get blah, blah, blah. But it was because of her. <laughs> So she doesn't trust anyone because of she knows her. How she, is. How, she knows how she is. Now, here's the interesting thing about sin. We always see other people through our own eyes. Yes. And so whatever we are capable of, we put on other people, <laughs> even if that's not them. And that is also another like heist that people who are cheating, whether it be men or women, it's a racket they run on themselves. <laughs> they will literally cheat come home and then, and then suspect you was like, yes and, like you and you're like what what are you talking about? i didn't land here all day what are you talking about you know you start going dang did i go somewhere you know and it's because that is them or is anything go that you say literally i don't you start second guessing yourself anything that you say that doesn't add up or make sense to them they're like you're cheating and it's it's not that it's that if they were to say that they would be cheating and so they can't imagine like they don't assume other people's truths i will also say well i did say it Th these are sort of the, um, not the remnants of, but the consequences of sin. Yes. There are so many consequences of sin, you know, and, and when we do these things, you know, there's just this price to pay, but a lot of the price is belief. We don't believe anymore. And I don't think people understand the gift that believing is believing with the heart of a child. What kind of a gift that is. That's what was threatened when I went through yes. and that is what made me almost lose my mind because if I don't believe God, like I can't live, the world doesn't spin on its access. Nothing makes sense. And so, um, you don't have to believe people, but you have to believe God. You have to believe God. Like there's, you were created for it. 
You know what I mean? And there's no way around that. And the beautiful part about that is when you come back with your tail tucked between your legs, because you will, mm-hmm. um, he, he, he's the same. He didn't change. He's right there. He's just going, you ready? Like, I've been waiting on you. Like, you know, that whole thing. And even that, when I think of bitterness and angry, angriness and doubt and confusion and all these things that you don't want to live in, but that crowd your how your heart, excuse me, when you've been through something and you're thinking about it from the wrong perspective and you don't want God involved anymore, um, all of that just gets washed away. Mm. It really does, and it's 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 a um, it's a word on forgiveness. It is. It's like you don't want to forgive because you feel like you've been wronged and you feel like, and I'm talking about between me and God now, you feel like you let me down and you didn't have my back and you led me to the slaughterhouse and I got slaughtered and I don't appreciate this and you didn't tell me that was going to happen and I'm mad at you. Um, (laughs) And uh, I still don't have an explanation. And he's like, you ready? And I'm like, I mean, I guess. You know, like, it's literally like, if I leave you, where do I go? There's no place yeah. else to go. These people are crazy out here. And I know too much. And when I say I know too much, what I really mean is God is good. Mm. And no one and nothing else is. And if you don't know that, try leaving him and you will find out. And that's what God is just was speaking to me just now about guarding your heart is literally guarding where God resides in us because he comes into our hearts. And so when we guard it, we say, I'm going to protect this beautiful relationship that I have with God and nothing externally is going to ever make me wane from that relationship that I have with God. Knowing that God says that he'll bless me with the what desires of my heart. And so the reality is, is that he cares so much about us. He's so intentional about us that even when he allows us to go through heartbreak, it's because he's going to birth something even greater at the end of it even greater even greater you know even greater i am i look at the black marriage movement and um i look at what it's doing and i look at the um relationships that i've been able to minister to yes um and i coach couples every single day um, I'm not supposed to be working weekends, but people call me on the weekends. Yeah. So I work weekends too. And the reality is that I love doing what I do. And, and I you're love. Amazing. Let me just stop in the middle. You're amazing at doing it. Thank amazing you. at doing it. And and uh, go ahead, talk. No, no, no. Yeah. It's so, um, not to toot horn, but I had a client hit me this morning and. Um, she had paid for a session for a family member of hers. And so we had our first session last week. And so she hits me this morning. She's like, her husband hit me up and said, who is this therapist you've sent her to? Yeah. And she said, initially I was like, Oh no, what went wrong? (laughs) What happened? What I do? You know? And he was literally like, uh, the changes that I've seen in my wife after one session are ridiculous. Like she's doing all these things that I've always wanted to do. And I've always asked her to do. And all of a sudden, like, she's like, she, it's like, she's returning my wife back to me, you know? Mm. And and I know, I know. And so Mm. my client was like, you have a gift. And see, I was about to say that some there's, there's therapists, and there, there's people that are anointed to to mend the hearts of people. Yeah. And that's what you have been gifted to do. You've been, because see, people can look at your uh, your Instagram. You, yes, you're team woman a lot. That's just what it is. But I'm a girl. Yeah. Here, let me just, let me, on, let me finish, I'm gonna, let me finish I'm gonna, and then okay, you say this. You come off team woman, but what I found is that you do provide a lot of balance. And so that's what I always try to challenge you in and say, well, what's that woman's role? Because she just didn't become a side chick. She auditioned and she accepted the role and she's playing her role very, very well. Nobody didn't put a gun to her head and make her sleep with a married dude unless she didn't have any knowledge about him. That's my only caveat. Yes, with those. Unless that, that, you know, unless that was a situation. But the minute that she found out, even if she's so tied to him, she still has a responsibility to stop. Yeah, the you do. She found out. You, and, and by the way, what we will tell you, um, and, and I say this because multiple therapists have talked about this. Once the woman's heart is already engaged, which is why you have to guard your heart. Yes. Um, and, and actually, Before I go there, I'm going to say, when I say guard your heart, specifically when it comes to men, you have to do your due diligence. You have to ask the questions. If you don't ask the questions, you're culpable now. And the only reason, and that doesn't sound fair. 
and to a certain extent, it's not fair, but this is the reason why, because men are lying and, or rather men are not being forthcoming, forthcoming with the truth. Yes. <laughs> so it's on you to ask is what I'm saying. And no, that's not fair. But the reality is I started this entire thing talking about how, if you think that you're going to enter into the dating world and everyone's going to have your intentions, they're yeah. not. Yeah. So you do need to ask and you do need to do your homework and you do need to do your due diligence and you need to pay attention to the signs. There are a lot of signs as well. Um, but, and uh, <laughs> as a therapist, when you talk with a lot of therapists who deal with women who find themselves in affairs, the hardest part is if she is in the affair and she finds out that he is married because she's already in love. Yeah. It doesn't um, remove her accountability, but what it does for us is we now know I have to take her through a process. Yeah. And so it's more about, um, cause I want anybody who's in that to know you can get out. You just have to know, and you're probably going to need help. You are yeah. because you're already in love. Love, you know what I mean? Um, but you can absolutely get out. We can help you get out if you want to, you know, if you want help and you're in a situation like yeah. that, uh, black marriage movement, DM me, um, we can start working, but it's, there's going to be an unraveling because she's in love with somebody. Yeah. So there is a process to that. And I want people to be really clear about that and to understand that and have some grace for that process. Once she's made the decision, I got to get out of this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, cause it, any habit, like how many of y'all uh, broke your new year's resolutions? <laughs> like, let's be honest here. Don't be, thank you. Don't be a hypocrite. Um, once there's a, there is a process and a process means a process, which means you're probably going to take three steps forward, one step back and then four steps forward, yeah. two steps back. And then, but you're walking out, yeah. you're walking out and that's yeah. the intention. And that's where we're going. That's where you're headed. Good. So, but you're absolutely right. Women have, um, women have a responsibility. The platform is a little female balanced. I am a woman. I do run it by myself because I am not married. Um, that's just the way it is. I do my best to be balanced. Man, I don't, I always get that right. But what, what, when so I great? get married is my caveat. There it is. He will also, and then we'll be more balanced. So y'all just pray for me. <laughs> That's it. Pray, pray for, for my her husband to meet her purpose partner. So that we can be more balanced <laughs> in, you know, the delivery of the content and stuff. Just naturally, just naturally. But what was so great about it is that the husband saw the change that, that, yeah. that you were so balanced in whatever you told her yeah. that he seen it and he felt different. And what happened now he has a different level of responsibility. When someone says you gave me my wife back now, he knows that now I'm responsible for this level of a woman. Now I love that you said that because, okay, so many couples fight because they don't understand the role they're playing and how their behaviors are affecting their spouse yes. and affecting the conflict. Yes. So people tend to have a leaning to do the wrong thing, the absolute wrong thing. Well, I'm not getting my needs met. So I'm taking yes. your blah, blah, blah away. Yeah. And it's like the moment you take that away, you're <laughs> really not getting your needs met now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I always say, particularly when I come in, I'm like, you know, do you trust me? Okay. Well, will you roll up your sleeves and try fresh? Like yes. you've never tried before. I know, but we tried before. I know, but don't they, they, nah. now it's a new time. Right. Yeah. Okay. So the reason I do that is because if I can get you, even though you've been disappointed 20 times mm -hmm. to start meeting her needs and don't fight me yes, because you're always going to fight me. And I'm like, listen, here's, here's the thing. I'm trying to here's help you out. Thank you. <laughs> Once you start meeting her needs, yeah. then I'm going to go to her and be like, look, look what he's doing. Now you need to meet his needs. Yep. And now I've got this loop, this beautiful, this, this yeah, loop infinity. of an infinity loop. Exactly. Yeah. Of you meet my needs. I meet your needs. You meet my needs. I meet your needs. And that's yeah. all we're trying to do. It's the resistance that creates all of the issues. And the resistance only happens because you feel offended because somebody didn't give you what you want. But the way to get you want, the way to get what you want is to give it away. And yes. I said that earlier yes. and I'm telling you, if you give away what you want, particularly in marriage, you will get every single thing that you want back. And if you're not getting what you want back, because sometimes people are slow, yeah. you're still in an amazing <laughs> position. And I'll tell you why. Start doing that for three, four weeks. Mm -hmm. Don't say nothing. Yep. Just do it for three, four weeks. Start meeting their needs. Start doing little things that you know that they love, that they want you to do, that they've asked you to do, et cetera. Specifically stuff they previously asked for. Yep. But then go above and beyond. After about a month of doing that, that's four weeks. If they have not 
naturally started meeting your needs. You can go to them because you are now in a place to do so yep. and say, hey, babe, um, have you noticed how I do that mm -hmm. thing you like and how I, you know, added this thing you like and how I incorporated that other thing you like? And they're like, yeah, yeah, I like that. You like that? Yeah. Does it feel good? Yeah. I want that too. There it is. Simple as that. Can I have some? Simple as that. And now, because you've already modeled it, they're not in a position to turn you down. Yeah. Love softens hearts, and that's all you're doing. It's you're softening. loving them when you do that. Listen, I was in a Bible study once, and we had this experiment, and they were like, we were doing a love study, and they said, take the meanest person you know, the most curmudgeonly curmudgeon, <laughs> curmudgeon. and just go love on them. And I did. I took the meanest person I knew. And I just went and started loving him. And I was just doing all kinds of little things. I would just pop up and call him and, and see how he was doing. I would tell him I would love him. I would send little notes and stuff. I would do all kinds of different things. <laughs> I, I did. I was like, this is an experience. And I'm, you know, it's, this is a learning thing. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to ace this test. So I do all of that. And then I forget all about it. Like a month goes by, two months go by. All of a sudden, this dude starts calling me and being nice to me and doing all these things for me. And, so, and I, I promise you, you forgot I about had it. no idea what was going on to such an extent. I went, who are you? And what are you doing? And Holy Spirit was like, remember? And, and I went, you planted. and you know, that's biblical. Do you love never fails. fails? Yep. It doesn't fail. So, you have to love and yes, you have to guard your heart. You have to guard your heart from um, poachers and predators who yeah. don't want the best from you. Yeah. You have to guard your heart from people who would take advantage of you. You have to guard your heart from people who are already in relationships. Yep. You have to guard your heart from inappropriate relationships. Yep. And that would look like your boss or yep. your doctor or your therapist. Yeah. Um, it would look like any situation where there's an uneven playing field. And so for the sake of propriety, pr propriety you don't do those things. Yeah. Um, and, while you're dating, you need to guard your heart too. Um, but that doesn't mean that you never love. You have to do both. And that's what I love about God. Everything is all about balance. In all fact, about balance. you know, um, one of the ways that you know that the Holy Spirit is present in any principle is because of the presence of balance. It's not too far to the left or too far to the right. Um, and so, yeah, I encourage you to love. Love who is beautiful. It'll cost you. It'll cost you. It'll cost you. But it's also super worth it. And there's nothing better on the planet. And one, it never fails. One thing that I always do is I, I sow where I want to go. And so like even on my podcast, I did, uh, I sponsored a wedding during the pandemic and paid for wow. three people, uh, three couples to get married. Wow. Because I said, God, I want to be married and I want, and I said, and truthfully speaking, I said, I'm sowing where I want to go. I want my wedding to be so magnificent that a network pays for it wow. and I said so I'm going to plant the seed and I'm going to pay for it and I have friends and stuff that sponsored and they provided you know fl floor arrangements and all that type of stuff uh but you I really said really got into it oh it gets it gets it when I when I say I do something I get real serious That's with beautiful. it beautiful and so I said I'm a so where I want to go God I want a magnificent wedding for my wife and I want it to be on somebody else's dime. So I'm going to, I'm going to go and plant the seed. I love that. I love big requests. I love, um, not just big requests, but then like you said, sewing where you're going. Um, I love big faith. I love it when people like step out, um, and ask for something extraordinary and then like <laughs> sow seeds in that area. I just, I think that's gorgeous. That's how I live my life. So it's, it's such a beautiful thing. Uh, but listen, how can people connect with you? So I am at Black Marriage Movement on Instagram. Uh, my name is Denai Marari. If you didn't already know that, I am a relationship coach. And so if you want to um, deal with your relationships, if you thought anything I said here was valuable today, and if you want to hire me as a coach, you can DM me at Black Marriage Movement. Um, a lot of people email me. I prefer DMs. You can email me, but just know I'm on the platform all day, every day. And so I'm constantly, you know, checking DMs and stuff, but emails eh, every other day <laughs> might check that. So if you email me and I don't get back to you right away, DM just know that that's why. Yeah, D yeah. D DM her. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank you publicly because you were responsible for one of my first videos going viral, uh, that episode with Essence Atkins. You found a clip of that video and you shared it on your platform and it got, I don't know, a couple of like seven, 800,000 views or something ridiculous or I loved or whatnot. that clip. I loved yeah. that interview. I love Essence. I love everything about her. And that's what uh, first connected us. And then you and I started doing lives together and I said, I need to have you on the podcast. And um, 
how intentional God is, you're actually looking at relocating to Dallas, right? I am. I'm actually, I'm looking at a lot of property down here because my neighborhood in LA <laughs> is 2 million for dirt. And I know that because I spoke with a real estate agent before I left. And down here you can get four and five and six and it's like a, pan a mansion. So I'm like, all right, let me, yeah. let me look at Dallas. It makes more sense. And because of black marriage movement, thank you all of you who follow me. Um, I've been able to, um, do some things financially. Let's just say Amen. Uh, Amen. that. Read and between so, the lines. Yeah. Amen somebody. Yes. But also, I can work remotely now. You know, Good. I can work from anywhere in the world. And so, I don't have to be in L.A. And I have film projects and things like that with Hollywood. But a lot of that stuff is seasonal. So, yeah, yeah there's no you reason why I can't. just fly out, do what you got to do. Absolutely. Uh, and what's so crazy about God is that, you know, I'm really close friends with one of your close friends. I Alvy. know. And then, so, <laughs> I was talking to her one day. And she was like, oh, yeah, that's my friend. I was like, what? She was like, yeah. She just came here. That when I brought you up, you had just left Dallas. That is so funny. Uh, and I was staying with her. You were staying with her. Yeah. And she was like, "Yeah." She was just staying. With me. I was like, "What? I've been wanting to have on the podcast." I didn't even know that. I totally would have done that. I yes. came for a wedding. One of my clients was getting married. It was and one so, of those things that I was looking at. I was looking at your page, and I was like, still getting to know who you were, yeah. and be like, "What's she gonna talk about? Yeah. Who is she?" Because you always share content, and I've never gotten a chance to catch one of your lives. That's true. And then when I got on the live with you, I was like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna have fun." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I never expected this episode to be what this was I didn't even uh, heck I thought I was going to talk about Neither something did totally I. different so did I <laughs> literally like, honestly I'm like I don't know what I just did <laughs> but here we go it's God and that's what I love so much about how intentional God is so y'all give it up for my homie Denai Marari thank you so much thank you for having me man when I tell you this episode was the bomb I mean Wow, thank you, Denai, for just showing up, transparent, living intentionally and transparently. Man, it don't get no better than that. And just as a disclaimer, she kept saying, can we re-record this episode? I think I shared too much. I said, no, you shared exactly what God wanted you to share. Dear future wifey, let me kiss your heart. It's been mishandled by misfits who didn't know how valuable you are. I'll lock up your heart with vows that I'll honor until my last breath. I'll create ways to make it beat to the rhythm of my intentionality as we ballroom dance throughout our love story. Baby, let me kiss your heart. I'll do it slow, promising to never cause damage like the ones before me. I'll gently handle your heart like a rare artifact. In fact, I'll try not to handle it at all. Instead. I'll become your personal spiritual cardiologist, studying everything I need to know about you intimately. I hold the keys to your guarded heart and it'll only open through my consistency, persistency, masculinity, and Christianity. The Lord promised he'll give us the desires of our hearts and he gave us each other your future hubby thank you for listening to the dear future wifey podcast remember be lit live intentionally and transparently and don't stop loving make sure to subscribe to our dear future wifey youtube channel we're available on apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, spotify and stitcher we welcome your support simply share our podcast with your friends and family